I am now going to welcome Ping Lim, our next speaker, our next hybridizer. Um, I'm so excited. We here in the Northern California, Hawaii, Nevada district have been fortunate to hear Ping many times at our district conferences because he loves to come talk to us. He lives close by. And my friend Flo has his brother as her postman. So Flo's always kept us in contact with Ping. <laughs> and we love Ping. I've loved Ping for years and years. He's a wonderful speaker, and he's a wonderful hybridizer. And he was, I think, one of the first hybridizers that started hybridizing without spraying, without doing anything. And I was always impressed with that. So without further ado, here's Ping and read on page 10 because he has a new website because he has his own nursery now. He's not working for Bailey anymore. Welcome Ping Lim. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's really good to be back again and special in the Bay Area. And uh, actually my, my first job in Pleasanton with the Vaughan Nursery. So when they come back here, look like I'm coming home. <laughs> it's feeling good. And my two daughters actually is born in Pleasanton. So it's a hometown feel. So this morning I drive around Pleasanton. That's I, I left Pleasanton about 20 years ago and everything's changing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I still keep my house that time. And then I, I, the ball, right now, you don't see the ball. If 20 years ago, if the ball just keep the ball over there with that 20 acre, they can retire now. <laughs> so everything seems to be uh, going good in California. And coming back here is kind of really exciting and special to see many old friends. And old face, I mean, old friend, And meet some new friends, too. Uh, today, I'm going to present hybridizing for the future. Not necessary to say I know it all, or that's, that's just my own opinion, not necessarily the right way, uh, <laughs> the right things. And uh, this morning you heard uh, Dave talk, and he speak very good English, <laughs> and bring us a lot of information about the scientific breeding way. But however, um, to start with, I will say thank you. Uh, Elsena called me uh, two years ago. Pink, can you come over, make a presentation? And those times, I, I cannot refuse that. Two years ago, I'm here. And thank you to Cynthia. And she is the, the lady that really uh, asked me to come here f uh, from a AIS to, to recommend me to come here again. Actually, for this kind of meeting, I've already been three, three times or four times. But every time I come here and talk, I get so nervous because I don't know what, what new thing I can tell you guys after two to three years. So if you don't hear anything new today, that means I'm persistent. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear something new today, that means I learned something that I don't know before. Okay. I don't know how many be, have not heard my talk. Can you raise your hand? Wow, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have to worry about what I said before, right? <laughs> Thank you for coming. I know, I know some of you actually come from the East Coast. And I met one lady yesterday. He said he come from Detroit. That's a long way to come, <laughs> to come over here. And thank you for coming. Well, OK. Be a breeder. Just like Dave just mentioned this morning, you have to understand a lot of things not just breeding. You have to know the marketing trend. You have to know what the customer like. You have to know where's your customer. You have to know what the problem is today. That is what I study, uh, US flower market trend, and with this uh, very updated uh, information. And from USDA, May uh, 2012. And if you, if you read inside the information, you can find out 25 bi billion that cons consume each year uh, since 1990, and now actually it's a little bit more. But United States is ranking about, about 
12. And actually, it's about 6.2% of the total consumption. And the United States consume about 4.2 4 billion. The next crop, you can see this. The crop, horticulture crop, from 2002 to, that's about 10 years. And you can see here the significant drop since 2007 to 2008. That is the time I lost my job. So less economic crisis over here uh, from Bailey. And then now I start my own business uh, since 2008 uh, until 2012. Actually, fortunately enough, I, I pick up by, uh, later on I will tell you what's, what's, what's going on about my life later. Okay. And here you can see the, the, the pie, uh, which annuals, embedding plant, garden plant, actually take a big chunk of it. And then you can see parting flower plant that including roses and uh, propagating material and might be including roses as well. And uh, let's see what else. Cut flower is also a big chunk of it. Then I study on the cut flower and see what's inside the cut flower. And you can see the roses is also take a big significant of it. So now you know how rose is important to our life, just based on the consumption. And as you know, what is, a good, what is good about rose to our life? If you think about that, why you guys love roses? Not just because of, of a war. I think it's, it, it's beyond a war. Roses actually bring beauty, bring color with life. You don't see any color with life but roses and with the story. Historical story. There is a lot of moving story when you get into roses. So today, roses make our civilization actually improve because rose is kind of perfect uh, beauty. So when you are mind occupied by the beauty th beautiful things, and when you work or when you do research or when you do anything, you want to go for perfect. So that rose, the beauty of it, is guiding us to the more civilization. And today, the most consumption of the flower, the country who spend the most money on it is the most civilization country, like Switzerland. United States is ranking 12. That's pretty good. And what problem we have today? That's July 3rd, uh, 1912. Where are you? If you look at the whole United States map, you can find out what's problem today is this hot and drought, like uh, Dave just mentioned. We need to find something that really can grow well in our country to make our country more green. You see this yellow to this drought, excellent, exceptional, tough. And you can see the, the whole United States map where is not really affect by, affect by the drought. Lucky enough, I think in Sa San Diego here that my new job located over there. <laughs> so this, this is really a problem and getting more and more global warming. So our future, when you look into the future, we know we are going to facing this. So what are we going to do? What's that? Green world. Go green. You heard all the time, go green, everything. Eco-boosting, eco-concept. <laughs> Excuse my English. I never speak good English. And edible. So now everything, when you want to eat, you think, is that safe to eat? So you want to feel something good about what you want to eat because the too much chemical use on, on the fruit, vegetable, or even flower too. However, Anything edible now is a concern. So we want to eat something safe. So edible is the, the new trend of the marketing on the, on the nursery. You can, about 10 years ago, you don't see any nursery growing, raising fruit tree. Now every nursery raising apple, peaches, a strawberry for the consumer. They buy fruit tree, they grow in their backyard because of edible for safety. They feel better they, what they grow, what they raise. And healing much mother nature. So we know our country, our world have 
a hole there. We need to fix it. So we have to go green and recycle, which means not wasting anything, not contaminate our world. We should using anything if we can, we can use it again. And social responsibility, that is, I think that's all the breeders' most important duty is social responsibility because what you create have to bring the world is a safer place, not only beauty, have to be saved. When the people growing your stuff, what your creation, they have no, should have no health concern. Like if you want to use in chemical to make, to, to make your environmental beauty, but you poison your environmental, that is not right. So the breeder have the responsibility to our society. We have to make our society a healthier society. For instance, right now, all the cut flower, all the uh, cut flower crop is going go down south, go to the tropical equator, at equator in the higher land, and which, which, which those countries is really suffering from the economic impact. They are not well enough, they are not live good enough, so the growing rows try to get away from the poor to be a reasonable uh, place to live. So if you, if you, if you ask your breeder, you breed something to grow over there and ask them to spray to make that flower beautiful. And those countries don't really have a good regulation or the rule to protect themselves for spraying chemical. So a lot of, a lot of bird defects cancer that happened in those countries. So that is not right, I feel. So if we, we are the breeder, we have to looking for, to look after those people too, who growing the rose for their living, they have to be a healthy condition for them to do. So better plan, healthier people. That is my theme today for the future. How to get that, that is qi. So if you can bring this qi, that's in Chinese we call internal energy, to build into the plant and to help plant fight the disease, that is the essential point of uh, the plant breeding. Okay, go green. <laughs> Bado will know what is that. Where is Bado? Bado is not here today. Okay. When you grow green, you're facing this problem. And you know, when I study in horticulture, my teacher always asked, tell us, said, when you go to the vegetable market looking for something with, with the hole or something, and you, you would feel safe to eat because those <laughs> vegetables have, not, have no chemicals. <laughs> so that is the good indicator. <laughs> What happened? Oh, okay. Marketing trend today to all the urban style living, smaller space, looking for news and difference. Oh, the news is not that, no, no S. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Local shopping. See, that's the hard part of the English. When you put an S, it, it, look, it make different meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Local shopping. When, you know, people today, they, they have the palm smartphone, so the smartphone will take you to normally, like in, if you're in California, they will take you to California shopping, not go to New York, those things. And creating habit, habitats for the native wildlife, user interest and experience, conservative conservation and less consumption. The middle class is shrinking, credit is less to expand, and buying group, People all grouped together to buy for the Bob discount. And here, don't want to dig. When, when I see this, I said, what happened? The, the young generation, after the baby boomer, generation Y and generation X, they said digging is my father and my grandparents' job, not his job. <laughs> so, novelty. They've just talked about rose. You know what? I really bring a blue rose with me. <laughs> this is a real one, it's not the plastic one. Well, 
everything made in China. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a real white flower that died in blue and it's fresh, but they dehydrate it. So it, it will last for two years. So it put in the, in, the, in the container like this, look like a diamond. So it's a pretty good gift to give to friends. So I will preserve this one from Cynthia, that who, who invited me to come over here. Okay. What's a marketing demand? Diducing time and money for plant care, create create an eco-friendly environment, year-round beautiful broom, patio pot, and hanging basket. That the, for the people who don't want to dig. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, vibrant color, to the fashion, you know, to make color brilliant. It looks like today is uh, the fashion. New material, new design. Best price, best quality, and quality at the best price. That is the trend for the marketing today and looking for the roses. Okay, where can we get those things? So today we're looking for the drought tolerance garden, high tech water saving, rain harvesting. Have you heard about that before? Rain harvesting. And now getting popular. And this is the first, I, I just learned this word, native water. I, I, I never know that before. So using a lot of native plants. So this is a new creative. So rain garden, that save all the rain water. So if you don't have, if you have no rain, plant this. <laughs> Succulent, cactus. <laughs> Balo, you just came, right? We have a caterpillar. Caterpillar. Want to ask you what is that? Okay. <laughs> Desert rose. So we need a rose can grow in desert. I just drink the water because it's so dry. Here is the and 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 then to, so this is the 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 flower have many different kind of <laughs> color, but there is no way it can replace our roses. Succulent. So the most popular now in the tr in California area. But what Shakespeare said, of all flowers, I still think rose is the best. So we want to stay with roses. We know there is a lot of things can tolerate drought, can tolerate hot and heat, and can grow, can bloom. But we want roses. That's what today we're talking about. What is rose? Differences, different uses of roses. For sure, for landscape, for gift. Actually, for perfume, for food, for tea, there is a lot more. But here is the, the subject that we are working on too, those things. My cat loves rose too. <laughs> Is that in Chinese? That proof that's my cat, right? <laughs> okay, how about this? Rose show. Okay, people now. <laughs> so people get, get together too because of roses. We meet more people. And we do this, you know, maybe a few times a year. And some people, because of come to the rose show, they get married. And some people come to the rose show, they get divorced. <laughs> okay. Actually, the, the, most, the most significant on roses, not because of their color, not because of their ever bloom, not because of their resistance, not because of their fragrance. The most important is they have romance. If the rose without romance, it take out the inside of this. Because of the rose carry romance, it lasts thousands of years. And then it will go further, thousands of years further, because 
people like us know love, know romance, and we need those. When you need love and romance, you need rose to represent. Sometimes it's very hard to say, but giving a rose to a person that you like, you love, that expresses what you feel inside. I actually have more story about that, but I'll talk later. <laughs> Around the world, more than 26,000 rose variety around the world today that we have. And why we need a new one? You know, those questions. <laughs> Perfect rose. And the people that who have listened to my talk in the past have been seeing this picture many times because that is the picture that I learned and I, I believe still essential, qi. Qi is internal energy, life force, that I believe not only in people, in rose as well, in plant also. So like disease, disease, repeat, repeat, repeat. Easy to root, hardy, in compact, not easy to grow, fragrance. That fragrance needs a lot of energy and mass of bloom. And not just beauty, it's a lasting beauty for the perfect roses. And actually, it's, it's really beyond beauty. It is beyond beauty that we need from roses. Okay, now a big question. How to get that? So they've just mentioned today that we are going to get it from species, ba Dr. Basie and Ralph Moore. And actually, we, we need a lot of work to do on how to get those good genes today, okay? I will, I will share my experience with you, how to get that. I know there's a rose breeder here too, Chris here too. Chris. <laughs> so you might learn my trick. Okay, it's so easy to combine the beautiful rose with a tough rose and, and pray for the perfect seedling. But Einstein said what? That's Mr. Einstein. I believe in him. He's the most smart people in the world. Because he's so smart. And then uh, everybody knowing him, include, he has a lot of study, a story that I know very good about it. And this story, I always tell my, my friend. I know many of you already heard about this, but I have to say again, because many of you never heard about this story, maybe. One day, one most beautiful lady approached Mr. Einstein and said, Mr. Einstein, we should get married because I'm the most beautiful lady and you are the most smart kid, smart man. If we get married, our generation will be most beautiful and most intelligent, right? And Mr. Einstein said, yes, I think so. But I want to test you first. If you are good enough, we get married. And the lady said, oh, obviously, good. Question. And then Mr. Einstein said, well, I give you one week. Go home and study what's the capital of the United States, the 50 state, the capital of the 50 state of United States. Okay, the capital of the, like California. What's the capital of California? Okay, the lady said, piece of cake. I come back in one week. I will tell you the whole capital of 50 state of our, our nation. One week later, and the lady walked to Mr. Einstein. I think I can marry you now. I know every state, the capital. And Mr. Einstein said, okay, let me ask you. What is the capital of New Mexico? You know what the lady said? N M. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mr. Einstein said, you know, now this is the reason I cannot marry you. Because if I marry you, our generation, what will happen is ugly like me and dumb like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now breathing. <laughs> so I try, to, I try to copy what Mr. Einstein said. Okay, I'm doing the white and the red. And I have a picture that I'm going to breed pink roses, right? The pink color. So I, I'll, I'll have more percentage on those uh, pink pigment will show up. So let's ask the bee to do the cost. <laughs> okay, what you got? <laughs> Where is the pink? <laughs> That's Uncle Sam. 
and that is not imitation, it's a real uh, flower actually from uh, the 4th of July, the seedling, so Tom. Okay, Futura, the future, disease, resistance, novelty, form and color, fragrance, own root, stress-free, eco energy, and thornless, long-lasting. And I, I have a little bit uh, 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 question about this thornless. And Dave, he said he he, he loves thornless. That's what he want. He don't want prickle on the on the on the roses. But for me, for a lot of people also, I believe that the thorn really indicates something. Care, careful, soft, tender. So when you want to touch a rose, you wear it, you feel expensive. You, you have to be careful to, to treat the roses. The thorn indicates arrogance. For me, I feel thorn, if the rose without thorn, is so easy. You not appreciate something that's too easy to get. <laughs> Just like you guys come here, wake up 3 a.m. Try to set up a rose show, and somebody go to sleep today now. So however, thorn, I, I, I value the thorn. The rose without thorn, well, it did not mean much. But, but for breeder, you have to know it's important for the economic impact. Because without thorn, that will be a lot easier for the cut flower grower to pack the rose, to ship the rose without damage by the thorn. And if you look at the cactus, the cactus whole body with the thorn, what that mean? The cactus, they grow in desert without stress, without problem because of the thorn protecting the cactus to be dehydrated. So if the rose have to tolerate for heat, they have to have thorn. Pickle. Actually, the thorn is not the right word, right? <laughs> okay, earth kind. Flower carpet impact United States since 1990. And knockout the 20. Well, what's next? Trips is just, just coming in. I think next is easy arrogance. And maybe next is rose by pink. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, legend novelties. Uh, that we have some kind of old rose that 100, 200 years ago, they, they create some, something is really novelty in the, the white age and very fragrant. And with this kind of novelty, they bring today a lot of good uh, novelty rose back to the old rose variety that can generate the, the good new novelty for today, like Gutendorf. Okay. It's so the effort of breeder to bring unique unusual color to the roses. I have to, I have to admit that Tom doing a lot of work on that, one of this significant. I thought this is one of the wonderful for this year. Ketchup and master, Tom. Good job. I thought that is really wonderful roses. I still using that for, for breeding because of the novelty of it. How about this? I don't know what's the color of this. And I understand when they have this seedling in the seed bed, the nickname is Baby Poop, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Heuthermia seedling. Dave had mentioned about this too. And this, this one called Eye on Me from Chris Warner. This one, Eye for You. So I thought this will be available uh, in the market this year or next year from weeks. And how about this, like the zebra, Heuthermia. So you, this one also available this year too. So, so blue roses, again, this actually is this. But some people might be interested in the Japanese invention for this uh, Suntory. And uh, in 19, actually in 1990, they, they have a $5 million investment in with to create the blue rose, and I have a chance to interview with uh, one of the organizers. Uh, they come to the United States, and I was working for the cut flower uh, business in those times. But I have a few questions about this blue rose. And actually, it's not really blue, and it's lavender. 
So this is the first generation, they're going to have the second generation. They find out the blue color will show better in the lower pH in the cytoplasm. And interesting, if you grow hydrangea and you put the acid, fertilizer is so blue. But in roses, you put the acid in the, in the petal, it's so blue. But a lot of roses, it's not so blue until they fade, until they're aging. Like Rhapsody in blue, blue for you, those two varieties, it's purple. So, but after they fade out, you see blue, you see the blue inside. How about this? Wave. Is that, that's the roses, not Dali. That's right, that's a novelty. That's what we're looking for. How about this? Crazy love, that's my seedling. Crazy horse. Crazy sister. <laughs> that's all I have. <laughs> Okay, besides novelty, also something inside the plant that needs to be uh, input also, the cold tolerance. These three rows is called polyjoy is tolerant below 30 degrees without problem. One of the, first, the, the world's first three rows that can grow in winter peak without protection and bloom again. And when we first introduced that in 2006, how much you think one plant? 99, 99. And one lady bought six of them at the, at the first, when, he, when she saw it, $600 she take out from the pocket. And when I go make the presentation, my wife with me, and she said, Pink, I, the lady bought that six, they buy everything, $600 per immediately. I think I married the wrong person. <laughs> I said, you marry the right person, you get it for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, David Austin, oh, that, uh, uh, Paul said yesterday, they are one of the world's largest uh, breeding, and then they really pay a lot of attention to fragrance and disease resistance today. And... Uh, I also have a story about him too, but today one hour cannot tell all the story. Maybe next time. Invite me again. <laughs> okay, disease, resistant and fragrant. Leib just said about it's a conflict. Actually, there is a way to get around. This is one of my, my variety called sweet fragrant. It's fragrance and disease, resistant. And it's grandifora. And it won twice in Portland Best, uh, 208 and 210. And 40 heroes. That is another rose that very fragrant without disease. When I said without disease, that means one, not 100% without disease. But the disease might come later, but it torrent the disease. You don't have to spray, but it torrent. And Last year, one of the potent best for the, and also very fragrant, that's the finest, that's hybrid tea. And Kiss Me is another one. It's fragrant without disease. That's what they call Kiss Me. The reason they call Kiss Me, because they don't have disease. If they have disease, are you going to kiss the people who have disease? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's our test field. I believe rose is for the world. I've been traveling around the world because I, because I love rose. And it's very easy to get together, to know people, because you love roses, you like, you like rose, and get people a lot easy because you, you look at things, it's more positive, beautiful thing. Everything you look at thing in your mind, you have roses. You look at things, it's more positive. I feel that way. So Love and Peace actually is selling around the world, including China, but they don't get paid from China, though. <laughs> well, that's another story. Yeah, so, and hot things, the Better Bread Roses, that from the Digger magazine, and this from the American Nursery, talking about my life with breeding the, the rose without spray. All my rose feel out there, we never spray anything. Zero day one. And from China, and lately from Russia, 
I got this uh, report from Moscow. One of my fans in Facebook, their Facebook is very powerful. I make a lot of friends around the world from Facebook. And they, they sent me the, the note, I see your roses in the magazine in Moscow. I said, send me, and then translate to me too. And then they did translate to me. I put that in my Facebook, if you want to know what they're talking about in, from Russia. And actually, they had tested my rose into 2005. And then, uh, I'll show you the, the slide later. And also in Japan, I got this pink gnome, won the, uh, the Japan best part, 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 part flower, part rose. And that is what they are uh, promotion efforts. And last year, I got a letter from uh, T Tennessee University very un encouraging comment about my rose that torrent for the earth kind testing. They, he risked, uh, Mark risked, risked about eight of my variety that's significant, significant, like the superheroes. And also I have some test site in Australia, Melbourne area, and this rose been testing for five to six years without, without spray, without water. How about that? Because they are field, they don't have irrigation. They're based on the, the rain. You see that? I visited that last April. And we, we prepared the rain because <laughs> we prepared for, for the rain. And uh, Anthony, and he told me, he said, they don't water, they don't spray. And this is one of my varieties, it's taller than me. When I, saw, when I saw this picture to my wife, she said, my wife said, Anything is taller than you. <laughs> okay. Here our testing site, actually in the North Pool, in the 60. And we have a testing uh, about uh, what, one, one, 100 to 200 miles uh, from Stock, Stockholm, Sweden. And that is re in, the, in the edge of the North Pool. And since 2005, they don't believe that rose can tolerate, so they plant up about tens of my seedlings out there, and it survived. And Better Home and Garden have, in 2010, had a hard pick. And this is the variety, it's the hybrid tea. This is the hardest zone for hybrid tea, cashmere. Yellow break rose. Como Park, hard is zone, zone four. Snow drip, that's the, the rose that Moscow, the Russian people love this one. Golden Eye, I have a good comment from uh, Boston and constantly bloom and cover with and without disease. Fiesta is another one from, uh, from uh, Tennessee, Georgia area doing well. This is a new variety, brand new to uh, this year just released called Music Box, and you don't see disease. My Girl is another shrub roses without disease. My Girl, My Girl, there is a song called My Girl, right? My Girl. <laughs> Kolokov. Let Paul mention yesterday about this variety and yellow submarine. We are in the yellow submarine, right, Peters? And sunrise, sunset. And this is the new one. It's a rugosa seedling. Actually, I crossed this one with rugosa. Uh, F should be F3, and is very, very nice roses. <laughs> it's not look like rose, but it. It, it makes you feel good when you grow this champion wish. Actually, that rose, I, I was called nickname. I, I have all my rose with a nickname when they, before they get to commercial. I call that rose White Hopes. White Hopes. Yeah. And here the rose we cause with the 9-11 impact our security system. Every time now we go to the airport, we have to check that's because of 9-11, the tourists, 
uh, fly into the Twin Tower. So I have four varieties that have been uh, selected from these uh, Remember Me roses, and most of them is fragrance. This one, this one not so fragrant, but this two is strong fragrant. This one is also. On root. Yesterday and today we talk about a lot of on root. What's good about on root? Because all the easy elegant roses start with on root from day one. And we compare our variety with the old variety, on root and plant at the same time, uh, root at the same time, and see how good our own root variety is. This is a love and peace, and the last is all mostly is easier, and we're using peace, the most popular roses to, to, to compare with love and peace. And actually, love and peace is seedling of peace. Discover how easy rose can be. <laughs> rose should be there for you, not the other way around. <laughs> you see that beautiful lake? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the lake or you look at the roses? <laughs> I think I look at the lake first, really, I'm sorry. <laughs> All plants should be easy to grow, I believe that way. That is our breeder's work, breeder's job. And Easy Elegant come with the two-year guarantee. If they die, you return it. Things different, Apple computer, what they said. You can just ask customer what they want and try to give that to them. By the time you get it to build, they want something new. <laughs> we have to lead the market. We have to lead our customer. We, not, we don't want you to lead us. We want to show you what we have and that you like it. You know, those things. That's, I'm not saying this. That is Steve Jobs say that. So I value this information. New seedling from Testfield. I have three seedlings that is really exciting I'd like to share with you today, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> Love me. Fragrance. No disease. And in Oregon, about my size, but when it comes to California, it's taller than me. Full of love. That is seedling from love and peace, and is fragrance. Sweet 16. Don't tell anybody yet. <laughs> Grim into the future. Disease resistant. Less energy use. Plus. I know a lot of you don't like disease resistant because it takes away the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Year round, <laughs> lasting beauty plus fragrance. Uncle Sam said, Go green, green world is our future. Don't hate disease resistant. You know, uh, rose people try to, try, to, try to show them they are good. They, they are talent, they're good. They can produce something like Picasso, make perfect flower. Nobody can do it because it takes a lot of time. You need to deadhead it, you need to pinch, debut it, you have to spray it, you have to do a lot of things to show the good rose. And actually, to show the ability of one person can take care of one rose. The rose is the harder to grow, the, the more to show your ability to take care of the roses. So that is a challenge. So if you come up with the rose without disease, you take out the challenge. It's no fun to grow rose anymore, right? <laughs> to most of you. So a lot of people, I hate disease resistant <laughs> because it takes away the challenge. Don't hate disease resistant. Our world needs to be green. We don't want to poison our world just for the beauty. We want to live healthy and beauty. Oops.
The world is our garden. It's not a dream. It's a mission for beauty, friendship, love, and peace. Thank you. Thank you. I think I can take some question. I know you have the right to remain silent too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When you were standing in the Australian duck field test where they used no water or spray, what were some of the varieties of, and what are they called here? The varieties sold by background? It, yes. Yeah, it's called Peaches Bale. B-E-L-L-E. The first word before bell? Pitches. Thank you. Where do you think those seeds will be out in the market? How many? Will be two more years. Two more years. What are the letters on your shirt? What does that say? Now, how about you do this? Yes. How do you get your varieties? Thank you, thank you for asking. <laughs> I waited for that question. <laughs> you know, a lot easier way to get our rose, just go to your garden center and ask for rose by team. Get some rose by team to the garden center. That is the easy way. Otherwise, you go to the web and uh, rose by team, you can just email me, I can, I can tell you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.